Okay, so let me open this one thing. Yeah, hopefully my screen is visible. So uh, I won't be able to cover all the papers. So which paper got, is this? Uh, this is uh, 2023 in the January term. So because we have uh, three uh, live sessions, I'll try to cover three papers. So today we'll do 2023 Jan and then 2023 uh, May next session and then 2023 September and along with some other doubts in the last Friday session. Okay, so let's uh, start with this paper. Sir, this is for quiz two, right, sir? Yes, yes, okay. quiz two paper. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So the first question here is this one. So the question is, uh, if we have this for i in star, so star means all the files and folders in the current directory, right? So it's a shell globbing. Uh, so it will match all the uh, unhidden files and folders. So for i in star, we are doing if the i is a direct right so this is using the test command so the square bracket is a uh, like one way of calling the test command so we are using minus d so which is a test for seeing if the thing which we are providing is a directory or not so i'm testing if i is a directory then move i returns move. true or false right yeah so uh not true or false so it will uh, basically in bash uh we use the exit code so here it will have a exit code of zero if it is uh, present. So you can think of it as returning true. Or if it is not present, it will return an exit code of non-zero, so one or something. So that can be treated as false. So here this is returning an exit code of zero. So this is itself a command that we are running. And that command is returning an exit code of zero. Uh, if this i, basically the current file or folder that we are iterating over if that is a folder or not so if that is a folder so this will only uh, run if the current file or folder that we are running over is a folder so what it's doing it's doing move that into uh, that same name dot d so if you're uh, moving something in its same place it's basically same as renaming that thing so i'm renaming the folders to be that folder dot d so for example if we have uh, folders called a b and c and a file called uh, one so the file one will remain file one whereas the a b and c will become a dot d b dot d and c dot d so it is uh, moving all the folders uh, so it is renaming all the folders to have a dot d at the end whereas all the files are untouched so let's uh, see the options so the first option is the file in the correct directory will not be renamed so that is true so for if it is a file, we are not doing anything to edit to the file. So the file will not be renamed. The second option is the directories in the subdirectories of the current directory will be renamed. Mm -hmm. So that is not true because we are not doing anything in the subdirectories. We are only going over all the files and folders in the current directory. So the star only prints everything in the current directory. So for example, let me clear this and close this. So, for example, let me create a few folders and directories. So if I have NKDR A, B, C, and let me create uh, the, a few files inside all of them, uh, and let me create folders also. So let me create X, Y, Z inside all these folders, and let me also create a few files. So let's say 1, 2, comma. Two, comma. Sorry. So now, if I do a uh, tree, you can see the uh, directory structure is like this. We have this file demo. We have these three folders, A, B, C. And we have three files, one, two, three, inside each of them, and three folders, X, Y, Z, inside each of them. So in this, the X, Y, Z are not going to be touched because here we are doing uh, for i in star. So if I do for i in star, do echo i. So here I'm just printing them. So you can see it's only going over all the folders and files in the current directory. So it will only iterate over A, B, C, and D. And in this, obviously, uh, the demo is a file, so it will not change it. Only the A, B, and C will be changed. So here, if I do, uh, instead of printing that, if I then do whatever is done here, so if I check if uh, I is a directory, 
pen. What we are doing, we are moving i to be i dot d. So we are doing move dollar i to be dollar i dot d. So if I do this, and we are so using the double quote, both the yes. So uh, in this case, it will not make a difference because all the words are single word. Uh, but if we have spaces in the name, so this will cause issues. So that's why we should always have these inside quotations. Yeah, but uh, here I guess uh, the dollar i quote. I mean, dollar i should be in the quotation followed by dot d. I think that is the syntax by fourth option. Anyway, uh, go. On. Yeah, so that is uh, no here it is entire thing and uh, both will each be exact same thing. So uh, because you're quoting what you don't know what might be. So dot d we always know will be dot d. The dollar i can be like either one word or it can be multiple spaces inside. So we need to quote dollar i. If I quote with dot d also, that is also not an issue. So here if I do this, so now you can see it has renamed a to a dot d, b to b dot d, c to c dot d. But uh, the demo is not touched. So the demo remains unchanged. So let's do the tree again. Yeah. So uh, this is, uh, so if you do tree, you can see that the subdirectories also, x, y, z for all of these, they are also unchanged. So only the directories in here will be changed. So the option four should be correct then. Uh, so the option four says the files are moved from current directory to another directory with its name suffix no, by. No, 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 it's not really files. I think directories yeah. are renamed. Yeah, so only the directories are renamed. No files are moved from one place to another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, we, if we put mv minus r, then will it also do it for subdirectories? I'm just. Uh, mv does not have any uh, flag. flag. Okay. So if you see here, mv does not take any flag minus r. Because when we are moving, uh, so we are basically, we, it does not matter. Uh, so we cannot say that move only the parent folder and uh, not what is inside. Because when we are moving, we are basically just renaming or repathing that thing. So whatever is inside will also be automatically repathed. So there is no way of doing minus R in move. So it will automatically do it for the folders recursively. Ah, OK, got it. So if you're using CP, then we have to use minus R for directories. Uh, sir, one one doubt here, sir. Yeah. So for i in star means star will take. Uh, uh, what does it mean, sir? For i in one to five means it is one to five, but i in star means. Uh, so star is a bash blob which expands to all the unhidden files and folders in your current directory. So, for example, if you do ls, you can see we have currently a dot b, b dot d, and c dot d. So if I do echo star. Star will first expand into a dot d, b dot d, c dot d, and demo, and then it will be given to echo. So echo will get parameters a dot d, b dot d, c dot d, demo. So it will simply print them to the screen. So star is handled by the bash itself. So if, when we are doing this, first star expands into all the files and folders name of the current directory, and then the for loop iterates over each of each one of them one by one. Okay, so if it is a directory, rename it to uh, with the suffix dot d. Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, in this case, what will happen is if I run that same thing again, so now it will run over a dot d, b dot d, c dot d. So these are still directories. So then it will rename it into a dot d dot d. Right? So it will again change it. So if you see, if I do this, now you can see that the folders have become a dot d dot d. So if I keep on running it, it will keep on adding dot d to the end of it. Right? So that uh, is, like, is where the second question comes. So I have not gone to that. But basically, this is what this for loop and if statement does. So we are going over all these files and folders in the current directory. And if it is a folder, we are renaming that into uh, having a dot d suffix at the end. OK. Sir, so one more thing. I have used uh, TeamX, but I have not used uh, this kind of a debugging window. Could you help me uh, uh, do this kind of a window? Uh, how are you doing this, sir? Uh, uh, which kind? Uh, like uh, you are getting something like a tree structure. The, no, the... So that tree is coming uh, by typing the words tree. So this is a command. So it's not installed in the virtual machine. So. If you type tree, so tree is a command that prints the uh, file structure of recursively from the current directory. So this is nothing to do with tmux. Okay, but but 
is it possible for me to work like this with this ui whatever you are doing uh, if you uh, if you are on your local system you can install a uh, tree but uh, in the virtual machine tree is not there if you want to recursively list out everything you can also use ls minus capital r so that will also list out everything in the uh, current directory so you can see in the current directory we have a dot d b dot d c dot d and demo then inside a dot d dot d we have one two three and x y z then inside a dot d dot d dot x we have nothing inside a dot d dot d dot y we have nothing inside a dot d dot d dot z we have nothing so for example all of these are printed so it's the same thing so that is easier to look at and this is also the same information given in a different manner okay so thank you yeah oh, so that is what the first question is about so the second option is directories in subdirectories will be renamed so the, it will not even iterate over the subdirectories so that is not possible and the third one is only empty directories will be renamed so we are not doing any check about emptiness of directories so that is also not possible so the minus d returns uh, so it will exit with exit code 0 if the option uh, the thing given is a directory it does not matter if it's empty or not uh, sir the option first num first when files in the current directory will not be renamed yes so this is true because it is only renaming the folders right so the files are not renamed files okay okay sir. Uh, sir, here in this question, if minus D is not given, minus F is given, then the uh, first option will be wrong. No? Then yes. the files in the current directory will be renamed. Yes. yes. If it's F, then the files will be renamed. If it's uh, D, then the directories will be renamed. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that is the first one. So the next question is, uh, so you have to basically replace uh, in a file, so in a file called template, there is this curly braces, double curly braces, the word date in capitals, then again close curly braces. And there can be uh, one or more space in between the uh, curly brace and date and the date and the curly brace. So what you have to do is you have to replace that uh, thing, entire thing with the value that is stored in the shell variable date. So we access the shell variable date with, with using the dollar. So we do dollar date to get the uh, value that is stored in the variable date in the shell. So here we have four options which are very similar looking. So uh, you can easily see that the first option does not have minus i, whereas the rest three does have. So here the question is uh, that replace the value uh, in the file. So, so this has to do it in the file itself. So the change should not be just printed to the screen the file itself should be changed so that is possible if you are using uh, the minus i right so the first option is that's why incorrect because we are not using the minus i so now in the second and the third uh, you can see the difference is that we are using single quotes here whereas we are using double quotes here so if you're using single quotes the dollar date will not expand so if i uh, put let's say for example if i do echo dollar user this will expand to my username if i do echo double quotes dollar user this will still expand to my username but if i do echo uh, single quotes dollar user then this will not expand to my username so anything inside single quotes is uh, not expanded by bash so that's why if we are doing this uh, self substitution with single quotes then obviously it cannot get the value from the bash variable so this will not work because we are using single quotes here. In the third option, we are doing uh, everything correctly. So we're using <coughs> minus i, and we are using double quotes, which will correctly expand the dollar date by bash itself before even calling set. And we are using g. So in the fourth option, everything is same, but we are not using g. So in the question, you can see it has even underlined that we have to replace all the occurrences of it. So for doing for all the occurrence in a line, we use the G. And uh, how the regex is working? So the regex is pretty simple. So we are matching the uh, opening brace that, uh, literally. So we are matching two opening braces. And then it's told that there can be uh, spaces. So there may be zero spaces or there may be uh, infinite spaces. So that's why we are using uh, the square brackets. So the square bracket is not necessary. Even without that, it will work. So basically, I'm telling that match a space, and that can be present zero or more times. So the star means zero or more times, and the space here 
means that we are trying to match a space character. So without without the square bracket also, if you just give a space, it's good enough, is it? Yes, because it's a single character. So and if I if I want to use a backslash s for space as a uh, uh, backslash s, and I don't think it works with BRE because uh, set by default is using BRE. So backslash s will okay, not okay. work. So for example, if I do echo hello one two three, and if I pass it through set and I ask it to uh, let's say. Uh, find all the spaces and replace that with uh, x. So if I do this, okay, if I do this, then you can see this is working. But if I use uh, backslash s, then uh, okay. So backslash s uh, does seem to work with set directly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in this one you can use backslash s also. So uh, the box bracket anyway is not required because we only have one character. Uh, but if we have multiple characters which we want to match with, then we will use the box bracket. So, wa so one other question because I yeah. had read this some. So if I use my backslash s, it will also work for a tab, right? Yes, it matches any white space. So uh, tab will not work for s, but s will work for tab. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if I use backslash s, then it will match uh, like the space character, then the tab character, all the white space characters. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. So even, a, even if I don't need that dot star, that also will be okay. I know it's not part of the question, but no. If we use dot star, then it it can match uh, any character. Whereas any I character uh, followed by date. Yes, but I only want to have uh, spaces between the uh, brace and the date. I don't want anything. Okay. So for example, if this was uh, double brace mandate, double brace close. So I don't want to replace that with the value of date. So only. Right. If the characters are space, I replace that. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, so that is the second question. So in the third question, here we have to basically change the format of a date. So here we are told that there's a file called dates.txt, which has a list of dates in uh, mm slash dd slash yyyy format. So for example, let me create a file like that. So let this, us this add is actually the uh, uh, graded assignment question, so, as in, in oh. the, the theory, not the okay. yeah, uh, week six, right? Week six, correct. Seven. Exactly the same question. Okay, yeah. So as you can see, uh, let's say there are some dates like this. So I'll just change the dates and so that was the month. This is the date. And let me change the year also, maybe. So if we see, if we do cat dates, we can see these are the dates. So it is a month, then a date, and then year. So you can see 14. So that's not a month. That is the date. So this is the American standard. So this is month, date, and year. And we are asked to replace uh, that format into the ISO format, which is year dash month dash date. So here we have to use the BRE by default. So here we have to do is uh, we have to just group each thing in a separate group and then substitute with the correct order of the group. So here you can see. Uh, so all the months and dates and year are obviously digits. So we are using 0 to 9 to match a digit. And the first two, which is month and date, can only have two digits. So we are putting 2 and 2. So here it is assuming that even if it is a one digit month, like for example, two or three, it will still have a zero padding here. So it will still be zero, two, zero, three, and not just two. So if it is just two, then this two will not work. Here we have to use one comma two in that case. So the reason we are only using two is because uh, usually in dates, we always have two digits. So even if it's a single digit date or a single digit month, we pad it with a zero. So we are searching for any digit to present twice and that we are grouping so this backslash uh, and round bracket so we are using backslash because it's bre so we have to escape the round brackets so, and also the curly brackets so this two digits we are first grouping then we have this backslash forward slash so we are escaping this forward slash so as it's told in the date itself it is a forward slash so you can see it's separated by a forward slash so i want to match that forward slash also so that's why we are matching that and uh, forward slash in itself in said will mean terminate like ending of whatever we are searching for. 
So I don't want to put a forward slash. I want to escape that. So that's why we are using a uh, backslash forward slash as well. So then we are searching for another group. So again, we are opening a group. And again, we are searching for any digit present two times. So that is the date. And again, we close the group. And then we again match a forward slash. And so notice that the slashes are not inside the groups. So the groups will only contain the values of the month, date, and the year. And then the third group, we are matching again digits. But this time, we are matching four digits, because a year will always have four digits. So then we have this unescaped forward slash. So this means that whatever we were searching for, that is over. So this is the entire thing I'm searching for. And now replace that with the following thing. So then we are using the uh, back reference to the groups. So I'm telling replace this thing with the third group followed by a dash, then the first group followed by a dash, and the second group. So the third group here is YYYY. So we are first putting that. Then the first group, which is MM. So then we are putting that. And then finally, the second group in the actual data, which is DD. So then we are putting that. So from the order of MMDDYY, we have successfully changed it into YYYY MMDD. And the slashes have been replaced with minus by simply putting a minus between the groups of back references. So this will do it for only one occurrence for each line. So if we have multiple occurrences in a line, it will do only for the first occurrence, because we don't have a G at the end. So the other ones, if you see, uh, there will be minute differences. So for what example, is wrong because 422 two doesn't exist. Yeah. So here you can see the order of the uh, back reference is wrong. So the first, second, and third one has the correct order of back references. But here also, it has not escaped the <coughs> curly break braces and the round braces, right? So because said uses BRE. So it is also told as the hint. So in BRE, the grouping round brackets, OK, so the round bracket here is uh, escaped, but not escaped here. But in both of the cases, the curly braces are not escaped. So if you don't escape the curly braces, then the BRE will not work. It will try to match for a literal curly brace, which is not there. So that's why only the fourth one is correct. So we can try that out here also. So let me quickly type that. So we are substituting. Uh, the group of 0 to 9 present uh, two times. And then we close the group, and then we match a literal forward slash. Then again, we match another group, which is 0 to 9. And we close the group. Uh, sorry, so this one also should be matched two times. And then we close the group. Then we match another forward slash. And then we Again, open another group. And here we match 0 to 9, present four times exactly. And again, we close the group. And now this we replace with the third group, which is year, followed by a dash. Then the first group, which is a month, followed by a dash. And then the second group. So if I do this on dates.txt, so you can see it's now in the correct format, year, and then the month, which is 0 to and then the date, 0, 04. So uh, if we are using extended regex, then we can not uh, escape all these round and curly break brackets. So then the uh, code becomes shorter. So you can see it is giving the same output. But we still have to escape the forward slash, because that is obviously uh, used by set to understand where the uh, search string starts and ends and where the replace string starts and ends. But here also, there is a way to not do that. If we, instead of using forward slash, we use something else to demarcate that. So instead, it is possible to use different characters. So for example, here I'm using the pipe symbol to demarcate the start of the search string. So now I don't need to escape the forward slash anymore, similarly for this one. And then again, the demarcation of the end of search string, we again put a pipe. And again, at the end of the replace string, we again put a pipe. So this will still give the same output. So if you want to actually use a forward slash inside your search or your replace, and you don't want to escape it, then you can use a different symbol to demarcate the S and the search string and the replace string and the end of the thing. So it can be pipe. So usually, it's either a forward slash or a pipe. But then other characters can also be used. 
one doubt sir in the previous uh, uh, in your workout or the previous one does not have a pipe so in yeah. the third one we are using pipe yes so if you don't have a pipe you uh, like if you don't use any other symbol you have to escape the forward slash which you're matching right so because we want to match a literal forward slash and uh, the forward slash by default means end of the third string so I don't want to put a forward slash. I want to escape the forward slash. So we are giving backslash. Yes. So then we, so we, if you put pipe, like it's some kind of indicating that the forward slash needs to be taken as literal. Yes. So if you are using pipe, then I'm telling said that uh, pipe is what you should care about as a special meaning. So automatically the forward slash loses its special meaning. So automatically it becomes a literal thing. Okay, so since I'm using pipe, the uh, the command, whatever is in pipe, is executed as one single command, and the output of the pipe is given as the uh, input to the second uh, second command. Is, is it so? Is it like so it, it need not be pipe. It can be any character. So, for example, here you can see we have used colon also. So anything you put after S, said will understand that that is the symbol used to demarcate the search part and the replace part of the search and replace. So if it is not a forward slash, then obviously the forward slash uh, has the literal meaning. So it will actually match the forward slash from the line and uh, it will not have any special meaning. So I can use any any delimiter uh, in the yes. text after yes. search, after yes. 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 So it just has to be same everywhere. So if you're using uh, colon here, here also it should be colon, here also it should be colon. Uh, sir, uh, one more doubt. So yes, colon, and then the the first you know extract of you know uh, the three two uh, sorry one two three ends there after the second colon, and then don't we need to start with another uh, colon, sir? Uh, well, uh, on, before the slash three. Yeah, so we have put one colon, right? So this colon means everything to the left of it and to the right of this colon is what we are searching for. And everything to the right of this colon is what we are replacing it with. Same as how it works with forward slash in default, right? Okay. No, this is interesting. I can use any character instead of forward slash. So in the question, in the options, they have uh, not used anything else. So they have used forward slash. So that's why we have to also escape the forward slash when matching. Sir, in the grape, we are using so S stand for the grape in uh, a space. Now, here it is uh, standing for the uh, search bar, right? Uh, in said, S means uh, it is an action which does the search and replace. Yeah. So, in grep, if you have backslash S, that means white space. So, that is true in said also. If you do a backslash S inside, so as we saw in the previous question, if you do a backslash S inside the search, in, in like between the this forward slash and this forward slash, then that will still mean a space. Okay, so if it is in a starting position, then uh, we'll say that. Yes. It is, yeah, okay. Yeah. It is such, okay. So what is wrong in the option one, sir? Uh, in the option one, we have not escaped the uh, curly braces, right? So because it's BRD, we have to escape the curly braces. Uh, escape the curly braces, so... Uh, I see that you know everything is same. No, no, just see the backslash before curly braces. Before curly braces, yes. So escaping means you put a backslash, right? So here in BRE, the curly brace does not have a special okay. meaning. So okay. it will match a literal curly brace. So if mm. I want to give it its special meaning, I have to backslash it. I have to escape it. Okay, so. So this is true for curly brace, round bracket, the pipe symbol. Uh, the plus symbol, uh, all these. So these five things. OK. So next is okay. this question. So here <coughs> it's told that we have a coded CSV. So a coded CSV basically means all the fields are bound by double quotes. So if it's just one word also, there is double quotes to the left and right of it. If it has a space in the middle also, it has double quotes to the left and right of the entire field. And if it has a comma inside also, then also it has the double quotes to the left and right of the entire field. So all fields are uh, having quotations at start and end of the field. 
So here your question is, uh, you have to convert this uh, quoted CSV into a uh, unquoted TSV. So the quotes will be removed and the commas which separate a uh, field should be replaced by a tab. So that is what a TSV is, tab separated value. So here, if I simply substitute comma with a tab, will this work? That is replace comma with the tab, right? Yes, if I do that, will that work? The regular generally will be a problem because we want it to be one word, not like separated by tab. Yes, so we have this comma in this second field for both the lines. Yes, right? also. That will also be replaced with tab, but I don't want that. So we want to preserve the commas which are not uh, field separated commas. So this is part of the text itself. Right. So this is basically assume one person's name, Nasreen, and uh, we are asking where do they live. So their address is Guindi, Chennai. So this is one uh, field itself. So we cannot uh, replace this comma with a tab also and make it four fields. So this is currently three fields. So this has to remain three fields only. So this should be Nasreen, tab, this Guindi, Chennai entire thing, then tab, and then one, two, three, eight, nine. So only these commas should be replaced by tabs. So what is one pattern which you can see uh, among the commas, which are actually field separators and not part of the data itself? Preceded by a double quote. Yes. So they are preceded, uh, preceded and succeeded by double quotes. Right. So both sides, they have double quotes. So instead of replacing comma with tab, what we can do is we can replace quotation, comma, quotation, this entire thing with a tab. Right. So what we will then have is quotation, nursery, tab, then this entire field will remain correctly as it is because we are not replacing this comma. We are replacing quotation, comma, quotation. Then again, this will become a tab and then one, two, three, eight, nine. So only thing left will be the last quotation and the first quotation in each line. So then we can obviously then remove those quotations also by simply substituting quotation with nothing. None. So that is the correct option. So first we are substituting quotation, comma, quotation with tab for the entire line. And then we are substituting quotation with nothing. So we are removing the basically the first quotation and the last quotation. So if I do it in the opposite order, which is option C, then obviously all the quotations will be removed initially only. So this, this all the quotations will be gone. And then we will not have any way of identifying the field separator comma and the uh, comma inside the field because we won't have any quotation. So this third option is not correct because first we should uh, substitute a quotation comma quotation with tab and then remove the first and last quotation not the other way around so this will remove all the quotations and then it will try to search for quotation comma quotation which will obviously not exist at all because all the quotations they have already removed and uh, the first one obviously is not correct because it's substituting uh, quotation with tabs so multiple things wrong with it so obviously this it will create a tab at the first and then it will create two tabs between fields it will also still have the comma there. So a lot of things wrong in the first option. And the fourth option, so it is doing what we were first thinking about. So it's only substituting the comma with a tab. So it will also substitute the internal commas with tabs, which is not what we want. So that's why in this only the second option is correct. Uh, so why are we using, uh, why are we using G here, not in the previous question? Uh, so we are sub yeah so in the previous question uh, we are assuming that this file only has one date per line so if this file did contain multiple dates per line then this will only do it for the first date and not the other so then okay, this yeah. would only do it for the first occurrence so here it is in like obviously intrinsically told that we will have multiple uh, things because a csv will obviously have more than one uh, field separator in a line because uh, even in the sample it's told that there are three field separators so for us to correctly replace all of them we have to use the g here yes. so hopefully this one is clear so the next question is uh, which of the following commands will print the file while prepending the line number to the start of each line so basically, this is asking your output to be uh, something like this. So for example, if I simply cat out the data.txt, date.txt, you can see this is the content of the file. But it is asking your output to look something like this. So it should have the line number and then the contents of the file. 
So uh, if you want output to be like this, then which awk command can be used? So here there are uh, four options. The first option is running only for the uh, end. So it will only print the uh, values of nr and dollar zero when all the lines are processed. So it will store still the value of the last line. So this will obviously not work because we need to print all the lines and not just the last line. So in the second option, what we are doing is we are uh, storing the field separator to be comma, and we are printing only the first field. So this is not what is asked. So it's told that irrespective of the data of the file, so whether it's a CSV or it's some other kind of file, it should always print the entire line uh, after the line number. So the NR will print the line number correctly, but this dollar one will print only the first column if this file happens to be a csv so if this file does not have any comma then this will work but if this file has comma then this will not work it will only print till the occurrence of comma which is not what we want so we want the entire line so we use dollar zero and not dollar one so this second option is incorrect so the third option is correct so here what we are doing is we are printing nr which is the line number then followed by dollar zero, which is the entire line. So irrespective of how the file is structured or whether it is structured or not, it will always print the entire line uh, for following the NR, which is the line number. So it will always print something like this. So we can try it out. So <clears throat> for all the lines, print the NR, then print the dollar zero. So if I do this on dates.txt, you can see it's printing the line number followed by the entire contents of the line. So that's why the third option is correct. And the fourth option, obviously, it's printing the first column and then the entire line. So it's not printing the line number at all. So this is incorrect. So, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, NR is number row. Can we understand that way, sir? Row yes, number. NR is the uh, record number, yes, record. or row number, yes. So for each line, it will store the uh, line number or the row number or the record number. So it is automatically operated. Uh, like in Oracle, we create um, in SQL, we'll create like you know sequence like that. Yeah. So uh, like it is going through all the lines, and uh, for each line, it is automatically incremented by one. Okay. So this is the uh, correct solution for this. Sir, in some cases, if we need to increment this NR instead of you know one, two, three, uh, one by one, uh, is there a possibility that we will like you know I will have I will have I will have like 100, 200, 300? Is there a is there a built-in function like in, in NR we can implement like that? Uh, so ideally, you will not change the value of NR. So NR is internally set in each line, so you will not change it. If you want like that, you can obviously create a variable by, of, by yourself in the begin part and increment it in each line in the action block part. So you can increment it by any value you want. And obviously, for each line, it will keep on incrementing. Or if you want something like 100, 200, you can obviously just do NR into 100. That will give you 100, 200, 300, etc. Because NR will be 1, 2, 3. So both are possible. No kiss. Thank you. So that is the this question. So the next question is, again, same thing which we were seeing earlier. So here you can see the same command as we were seeing earlier is there for i in star. And we are doing if di, then move. So here the question is, uh, if you remember, the files, uh, the folders kept on adding dot d, dot d, dot d uh, for as many times as I ran this uh, loop. Because every time this was a folder and it added another dot d at the end of it. So now the question is, we don't want that to happen. So if this uh, the folder that we are currently iterating over, if it already ends with a dot d, then don't add dot d again. Then simply skip that. So here the question is, select the missing command, which should be present here in this missing command part, uh, to make the above script to produce the same result on every execution. The file or directory names will be the same after the first and every other execution. So this basically means we don't want it to become like this, a lot of dot Ds. We want it to, if it's A, it should become A dot D. If it's A dot D, it should still remain as A dot D. So for that, there are four options. The first option is obviously incorrect. So here it's telling that uh, no change is required. So as it's very evident, you can see this is not the truth. 
because if we run this same script multiple times, it will keep on adding dot these to it. So this is not correct. So then we have uh, three options. So the second and third option, what we are doing is we are using ls. So we are printing all the files and directories in the current directory. And we are then searching for the pattern dot d. So the third one is incorrect because here dot means any character. So this means if it ends with any character followed by d. So this is obviously incorrect. And the third uh, option here, we are correctly escaping the dot. So here, this means the literal symbol dot followed by d. So we are seeing if there is a line <coughs> that uh, ends with dot d, so then continue. But here, we are doing it on the output of ls. So here, what we are telling is, if there is any folder which has dot d in the uh, name of it and at the end of its name then don't uh, do this uh, operation for any file so even if let's say we have some folders which has dot d and some folders which don't have dot d the third option will skip for all the files so it will even not add dot d for the ones that does not have dot d so that's why the third option is also not correct the fourth option is correct where instead of checking all the files in the directory using ls we are only checking the current file we are which we are iterating over so we are doing echo dollar i so dollar i if you remember is the uh, current file or folder that we are iterating over so we are checking if that file or folder ends with a uh, dot d then we simply continue so continue means we uh, skip the rest of the iteration of this loop and we go to the next iteration so we move on to the next folder so if there is a file or folder which already has dot d at the end of its name then we don't add the dot d again after it so that's why the fourth option is correct just once the third option or the fourth option the grep part hmm. the dot ds can also match dot d sorry dot d and dot d right this will also match dot d dot d yes so but that, yeah but we won't don't want that no 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 that is not uh, so uh, see the thing is uh, we should not add dot d of uh, to a folder that ends with dot d so if it's dot d dot d or if it's dot d dot d dot d dot d dot d uh, it does not matter as long as it ends with dot d we don't want to add another dot d to it only if it does not ends with dot d then we add the dot d to it if it's a directory so matching dot d or matching dot d dot d both are fine so uh, it will uh, just match the last dot d in that file name. Sir, okay. uh, yeah. I could not understand the question, sir. Could you explain the question once again? Sir? So the uh, you understood the previous question, right? Which yeah. was the same format. So there we were adding the dot d to the end of the name of the folders. Mm. So now the question states, add something in here in this second line so that this script does not keep on adding dot d to the names of folders so for example if i create let's say another folder uh, let's say folder so you can see we have a b b c and folder so now if i try to find that script which we ran one second yeah so this one right so if i run this so you can see it renamed folder to folder dot d but it also renamed c to uh, c dot d dot d to c dot so you can see it's keeping on adding dot d's right mm. as many times as i run this it will keep on adding dot d to the end of a folder's name if it's a folder so that is not what we want so it wants the script to be important so if we run it once or if we run it 10 times the output should be same so here if i run it once the output is a dot b b dot d c dot d folder dot d if mm. i run it 10 times it will have 10 dot d's at the end of it yeah. So we want the script to always have the same output. So that basically boils down to checking if the folder already has a dot d in the in the end of its name, and then not doing anything on that folder. So only if there is not a dot d at the end of it, and it is a folder, only then we should add dot d to the end of it. Okay. So, so here we are checking that. So i is obviously name of the folder. So I'm checking in the name of the folder if it ends with a dot D. Dollar means ends, and then backslash dot means the literal character dot. So just dot means any character. Backslash dot means the literal character dot. So we are checking if the uh, file ends with dot D, then we are continuing. So we are not doing uh, that iteration of that. 
Okay, so. And the minus Q is uh, so that uh, grep will not print something to the screen. Only its exit code is used. Uh, which one, sir? Which one you are saying? So the minus Q in all the three options with grep, mm. uh, that uh, signifies that it will not print something to the screen, even if it has matched. It will simply uh, uh, let us know of uh, whether it's there or not using its exit code. So that is how, anyway, the AND AND works. So we don't want to see on our screen if uh, the file currently has .d or not. We simply want to do this checking. So that's why we have used a minus Q here. Okay. So this is uh, how we do this question. So let's move on to the next one. So here the question is, given an awk script, tell us what this awk script does. So you can see in this awk script, we are passing two files, file one and file two. And the awk script has two blocks. First block is nr equals equals fnr. So uh, what is the difference between nr and fnr? nr is overall record number, yes, yes. multiple files. fnr yes. is for that particular file. Yes, exactly. Right? So the line number of uh, that particular file, and this is the overall line number. So uh, the only time when nr will equals to fnr is when we are iterating over the first file. Correct. So whichever file we pass as the first file in the script, that uh, at that time, both NR and FNR will start with one. So for all the lines of the first file, NR will always equals to FNR. As soon as we move on to the second file, FNR will reset back to one, whereas NR will keep on incrementing. So this is a quick way of checking if we are in the first file or if we are not in the first file. So here, if we are doing nr equals equals fnr, that means only for the first file, we are doing this. So here we are using an associative array, also known as a dictionary. And we are uh, taking the entire line as a key, and we are simply incrementing its value. So by default, it will start with 0. And every time we encounter that same line, we are incrementing its value. So for example, if we have the same line present three times in file 1, so the value of this ARR $0 will become 3 after uh, all the lines are uh, counted. So similarly, it will create dictionary for all the unique lines. So for all the unique lines, it will have the key as the line and the value as the count of that line. Because for every line, we are simply incrementing the count by 1. So then for the second file, so this is NR equals equals FNR for the first file. Then we are doing NR does not equals FNR. So this is when uh, the awk is running over the second file. So in the second file, we are uh, also checking if the $0, which is the current line I'm iterating over in the second file, if that is not present in the ARR. So ARR has all the lines of file 1 in it. So if a line of file 2 is not existing, then we are printing that line. So what this does is it will print all the lines of file 2, which is not present in file 1. So that is why the third option is correct. So line present in file 2, but not in file 1. So just let me know if this was clear. This is clear. OK. So uh, sir, could we, also, yeah. uh, could we yeah. also implement this without the first condition in the second action block? NR is not equal to FNR because mm. in yeah, because the array would not have the line uh, if it's like if it's yeah. Not in five. I I got your doubt. No, so that won't work because uh, awk runs all the action scripts for all the lines. So even if the first uh, first action script was successful, it will not skip the second one. It will also uh, match the second one. So uh, whenever we are encountering a line for the first time in file one. So that time it is not present in uh, this uh, ARR dollar zero, right? So yes. uh, although yeah, but then because this is at the uh, before this, so when this has been encountered before that already, it has been added into the dictionary. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you're right. So in that case, uh, this will never be true for the first file. So yeah, actually you can actually drop this first condition. So NR does not equals FNR. You can drop it because. Uh, the order of this action block is before this action block. Uh, if we had a different order, so if this action block was on top, then uh, we need to have this. Otherwise, it will print all the lines of file 1. 
uh, but because we have this line, uh, this action block at first, so first it will be run. And even the uh, like newly encountered line of file one will also be added into the dictionary. Yeah, so this will uh, never be true for file one. Will that, how it will work uh, or will, like so what I understood is yeah. that every line, you don't revisit the line. So both commands are working on each of the lines, no? Yes, uh, yes, but uh, as so first the first command is executed, right? So across all the lines, no, just one line. Yeah. Okay. Right. So uh, the in the first file, when the first file is going through, if I don't put nr is not equal to fnr, it will yes. it will print it. No, it will not print because. Uh, before coming to this action block, we are doing this action block, right? And here we are adding it into this ARR. So this <coughs> condition will always be false for the first line. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. So we can uh, try this out also. So let me create two files. Uh, file one, where we can, let's say, add some fruits. And uh, file two, where we... Uh, you can add maybe some colors. So obviously, there is uh, one thing which is common between file 1 and file 2, which is the color orange. So if I want to print everything in file 2, but not in file 1, so let me create an awk script, uh, or let me directly write it in the terminal. So if I do this, uh, uh, actually, it might be confusing. So let me just create another awk script. So here, uh, sorry for this, yeah. So here, if I do this, so nr equals equals fnr. So only for the first line in the dictionary arr, add the key of dollar zero and simply increment its count. So it will start with zero and increment to whatever is the count. So after this, if I'm checking uh, nr does not equal fnr and then this uh, not of uh, ARR dollar zero. So lines in, in file two, which are not there in file one. So then I am printing uh, those lines. So if I run this, so if I do awk minus f script dot awk on file one and file two, so this will print all the colors in file two, except the color orange, <laughs> because that is there in file one. But if I remove this uh, till uh, this so if I remove the and and part, so this should still work, right? Because what is happening is first we are coming into this action block. So for uh, the lines of file one, it is adding the entry in the dictionary. So by that time this action block is finished and we are coming on this action block for that same line, this condition will always be false because in the previous action block we added that key to the dictionary. So that key not being in the dictionary will never be true. For the first file so only for the second file this may be true if that line is not common to the file one okay. so in this case uh, we can drop that and that's not equals minus one uh, uh, fnr but if this was present on top of this then that would not work because we are checking this first uh, before adding it so in that case uh, you can see it will print uh, everything right so file one also it will print and file uh, two the uh, things which are not there in file one, that also it will print. So if it is present before this, then we have to mandatorily do that. NR does not equals FNR. And then, so then it will uh, only print what we want. So because this was present below, so in that case, we can drop that condition because it uh, evaluates basically top to bottom. So first this action block is evaluated, then the next one action block is yeah. So yeah, nice catch in this one. Uh, at first I did not realize that. So here we can drop this. So that is what basically this script is. Doing. So it's, it prints lines in file two, but not in file one. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So here we have uh, the access log of uh, some uh, web server. And uh, the first five lines are given to us. So we've already seen this uh, pattern a lot. So the first thing is the IP address followed by space, dash, space, dash, space. 
then uh, this uh, date string and the time and then a space and then this plus uh, 530 this is the uh, time zone basically so this is indian time then we have uh, the request which is sent so get request or put request etc and then uh, we also have like the user agent etc so here what we are doing is we are running this aux script so first we are extracting the date time by taking the fourth and the fifth column and putting a colon in between them so here because the fs is not mentioned so by default the fs is any white space so this will be the first uh, so let me if i can draw maybe uh, okay okay so this will be the first uh, field which is the ip address then this dash is second field this dash is the third field and this uh, opening bracket till this 19 is the fourth field and this plus till this closing bracket is the fifth field so what we are doing is we are taking the fourth and the fifth field together and instead of space in between we are putting a colon in between so this is anyway insignificant because you can see uh, in later we are just taking the time so then we are using the substring command of awk to take a substring of the date time which is this entire thing take from the 14th index uh, of length 8. so remember that this uh, is one based indexing so the opening bracket is one this is two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so fourteen is where the time starts the hour starts and then we are taking eight characters so two digits of hours two digits of minutes two digits of seconds and two colons so from the start of the hour till the end of the second we are taking as the substring which is time so then we are checking if that time is uh, alphabetically less than the string of 06 colon 00 colon 00 and if a time is formatted in uh, correct order like hour minute second so most significant first and least significant at the end and if it is zero padded so if it is always having two digits then doing string sorting or string comparisons directly tells us the uh, time comparison so if i say time less than the string 06 colon 00 colon 00 this means any time that is from midnight till 6 am so here we are checking if the time is less than 6 am and if that is the case then we are checking if dollar one so dollar one here is the ip address so if dollar one in ip so in is a, a membership checking just like python and ip is a associative array that we have declared later so here we are doing if dollar one in ip then ip dollar one plus plus else ip dollar one equals one so this is a long winded way of directly writing ip dollar one plus plus so in awk because the default value will be taken as zero we can directly instead of the these two lines we can directly write ip dollar one plus plus but this is also the equivalent so if dollar one does exist then increment it by one if it does not exist then set its value to one so both are doing the same thing so then we are basically uh, containing a uh, associative array of the ip addresses and the count of requests they have sent to the server before 6 am so then in the end we are storing a variable called max and we are again iterating over all the keys in the ip associative array so all the ip addresses and here we are basically doing a simple max finding so you would have done this in your python course also so here we are doing if ip i is greater than max so if the count of that ip is more than the max variable then set the max variable to be that count and set the max IP variable to be that IP. So this way, if you're iterating over all the IPs, this will basically in the end contain the IP which has the maximum requests sent to the server, but before 6 a.m. So then we are printing that maximum IP. So that is what the question is asking. So what is this op script doing? So we have four options. The, it is printing the IP address of the client that made most requests. So this is not true because it is not of all time because we are only checking for time less than six then the option is ip address of client that made the least request so this is also not true because here we are checking max so we are checking if ipi is greater than mx then mx equals ipi so this is storing the max and not the mean and the fourth option is the ip of the address uh, ip address of the client that made most requests from 6 am to midnight so uh, this is also incorrect because we are checking time less than six and not time greater than six. 
So the correct option is this one, the IP address of the client that made most requests from midnight to 6 a.m. So only for the request where the time is less than six and the uh, like the count of uh, that IP being present is most, we are printing that IP. Uh, hopefully this one is clear, right? How it's working. Uh, uh, one doubt, sir. Could you explain the associated array part? You are talking about the for loop, right? Yeah, uh, which one? So uh, this one, right? In the end. Yeah, the second uh, uh, part. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Hmm. So here we are First basically. Loop I am able to understand, sir. Uh, yeah. Dollar one in IP. So high IP from where it will get the uh, uh, value, sir? If dollar one in IP. This we are creating, right? So here we are creating IP dollar one plus plus else IP dollar one equals one. So this is an array that we are creating. It is it like count uh, zero, count equal to zero, then count equal to count plus plus. Yes, two. yes. So we are storing the count of that IP being present. So okay. if if that I that key does not exist in the dictionary, then create that key with a value one. So this is the first occurrence of that line. And if this is not the first occurrence of that line, that means we have seen that line earlier. Then that IP that uh, IP address will exist in the array IP. So then simply increment the count. So if we had already seen it earlier, just increment the count by one. So we are just simply storing a dictionary where the keys are the IP addresses and the values are the number of times they are seen in the uh, list. OK, sir. How about the second uh, code, the so second section of the code after end, end, then we are again starting the parenthesis and this the second portion of the code? Yes, so here we are running this after all the lines are processed. So that is what the end means. So here we are simply going over all the IP addresses and we are seeing which IP address has the maximum count. So we are storing that in the MXIP variable. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. About the second option, sir. Uh, why second option is uh, not correct? So it's asked, it's the second option says the least request, whereas we are finding the one which has maximum request, not the least request. Because here we have a greater than maximum. Okay. Yes, yes. We are uh, st uh, storing if IPI is greater than MX, then MX equals IPI, MX IP equals IP. This is the logic of finding maximum in an array, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. this is why we are finding the maximum uh, count of the IP. So mm -hmm. we are not printing the minimum. So if this was IPI less than MX, then this would have been least. So then option two would be correct. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So we might have to uh, do this paper half today and then half in the next session. So let's see how much we can complete uh, before 9 p.m. So this is the next question. So here it uh, gives you a few helps so that you can understand how some commands work. So for example, XRs command is given to you. So we have also seen XRs in the TS sessions, but uh, if you had not seen it, uh, you still have the uh, help of how XR works. So what XRs will do is whatever standard input is given to XRs as uh, standard inputs, so or however, however many lines that there are, we can use that to create the uh, command line of uh, another command. So it will run command with arguments, uh, initial arguments, and more arguments read from the input. So for example, if I have, let's say, if I do uh, cat date.txt. So, so if I just print this, so it's printing each date in one line at a time. So if I pipe this output to XRGs, so now XRGs gets each line as a standard input. So then I can ask XRGs to run some command. So XRGs itself will not do anything. It is used to run some other command. So I can ask it to run some command, for example, echo. And it will add all the standard input after echo as command line arguments. So now you can see all the lines are printed side by side because that is how echo prints multiple arguments given to it. So that is how XRs works. And it is also given to you in the help string. And also ls minus l output is given to you. So what are the current directories? So in the current directory, we have fold, uh, files a, b, c, and the folder d. So these are files because it starts with dash. This is folder because it starts with D. So also another help about XRGs, it's shown that if you do ls pipe XRGs echo, 
So Xanx will take all the uh, lines A, B, C, and D and put after echo. So it will become echo A, B, C, D. So you get the output A, B, C, D. So now the question is select the commands that move the file A, B, C to the directory D. So let us uh, see how the move command works. So if you see the man page, you can see that uh, one synopsis is move and then some options and then uh, source and destination. So you give one source and one destination. So that source will be moved to that destination. But if you give move and then source dot dot dot. So this means you can give multiple sources and the last argument will be taken as that the uh, directory where this should be moved. So this is not a destination anymore because obviously if you're if you have multiple sources they cannot have the same destination but it will be treated as a directory in which all of them should be moved so for example let me open another folder so here let me touch some files a b c and let me create the folder d so you can see now i have three files a b c and a folder d so if i do move a b c d because I have more than two arguments, move treats all the arguments except the last one as source files and the last argument as the destination directory. So this is not the name it should be renamed to, but this is the folder in which it should be moved. So if I run it this way, it will automatically move A, B, and C inside D. So now it will become D, which has A, B, C. So in this uh, syntax, you always have to put the destination directory at the end. So for example, if I create another, so if I do another touch and then KDIRT, so again, I have the same structure, A, B, C, and B folder. <laughs> so here, if I do, let's say, A, D, C, B, here, move will try to move the file A, the folder D, and the file C into a folder B, which obviously does not exist. So B is a file, not a folder. So here you will get target B is not a directory. So this will not do anything. So that is one way of moving multiple things into a folder by giving all the sources and then the directory at the end. Or there is another way of using MV by using the minus T. So if I use minus T and specify the directory explicitly, then instead of putting the directory at the end, I can have it before. So I can do minus T and the directory. And then everything after that will be treated as the source. So instead of doing move A, B, C, D, which might look uh, look a bit ambiguous if we are not familiar with the syntax, we can explicitly say that the target directory is D and the files to be moved is A, B, C. So this will also do the same thing. So you can see it has moved A, B, and C into D. So these are two ways of moving multiple files into one same directory. So now let us see the questions. So it asks, uh, select the commands to move file A, B, and C into the directory D. So obviously, we saw that the first command works. If I do MV, A, B, C, D, if there are more than two arguments, the everything except the last will be taken as the sources, and the last one will be taken as a directory destination. So this one works. So why does the second command work? So here, we are doing ls pipe xrs. So if you remember, ls pipes xrs will uh, put the all the file a b c d after the command so here i am asking xrx to run the command mv minus td so i am explicitly mentioning the uh, output directory to be d and then i am telling the source uh, files is uh, everything which is uh, given to us in the standard input using ls so it will basically try to do this so one second let me create another and let me do the touch and the mkdir so right now we have this. So what this will do, so if you do ls pipe uh, xrs echo, for example, so this will give you ABCD. So instead of echo, if you do MV, P, D, and then enter, so this will basically be same as uh, uh, MV space T, D, A, B, C, D. So you can see there is also an extra D at the end. But uh, obviously, move will just throw an error for that. But it will still move everything else. So it will give you an error that cannot move D into D itself. So I cannot move D into D because LS also contains the uh, file D. But it will not move that. But it will still move the other one. So it will move A, B, and C into D correctly. So this second option, although it throws an error, 
but it does what is asked for it to be done correctly. So it will move all the files ABC into the directory T. So the third option here we are using ls sort xrxmv. So here we are not giving explicitly the minus T D. So the reason this works is if I do ls and then sort. So for example, uh, let me create another folder. And here, let me create the directory with the name A and the folders with the name B, C, D. So here, A is the folder in which I want to move the files B, C, and D. So here, if I do MV, A, B, C, D, this will not work because A is the destination, so it should be at the end. Right? So target D, not a directory because it's trying to put everything inside D, which is not correct. So here the order should be MV, B, C, D, A. So this B, C, D can be in any order, but A should be at the end. So only then it will work. So in our case, we are told that B is the directory. So it is anyway uh, the correct order. So the last one, if sorted in the alphabetical order, should be the last argument to MV. So that's why here we are doing LS and we are sorting that. So we have it in the correct order, which is A, B, C, D. And then we are giving all those arguments to MV. So this is this is same as calling MV ABCD. So this, as we already saw, will also work. So this option and this option will uh, run the same thing, and both will work the same way. And the fourth option will also run the same thing. So uh, star, as we saw, expands to all the files and folders in the current directory. And uh, fortunately, that also does it in the sorted order. So if I uh, here, uh, so not here, so let me go back to our uh, the folder and let me touch A, B, C, and A, D. So if we have uh, these folders, so if I do echo star, so star will print, uh, like give you all the files and folders in the current directory in the sorted order. So MV star and this and the first one are the exact same command. So when uh, the MV is run, it sees the exact same arguments given to it. So it will move A, B, and C into D. So these are just three different ways of calling the same command. And the second option is using the explicit uh, T uh, flag to specify the moving direction. Just, just to reconfirm, sorting will do it across directories and files. It won't sub separate the two. Uh, can you repeat that? I didn't get you. Sorting, the yeah. third option. Yeah. That it doesn't matter if we are talking about files or directories. It will always do it alphabetically across all of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. It will always do it alphabetically. So the uh, because the output of ls does not uh, specify whether it's a file or directory. So here it is colored, but then uh, when we are passing it to let's yeah, say yeah. something else, uh, so then it uh, does not remain the color. So for sort, there is no way to know whether it's a file or a directory or if it's just text. So for sort, it is just different lines of text. So it will simply sort it uh, alphabetically. Oh, uh, sir, one doubt I have. Sorting yeah. is okay, but. Uh, Moving is uh, um, moving the files to the target directory. Target directory should be at the right side. Yes. So how does sorting will help here, sir? Um, so here the target directory is D, right? So we have three files, A, B, C, and target directory is D. Okay. So if I sort A, B, C, and D, then what will be the order in which it's printed? It will be same A, B, C, D. Yes. So D will be at the last, right? Um, so then if you are using X args, then D will become the last argument. So it will be MV, A, B, C, D, like this. So that is to twist the question they have given like that, is it? Yeah. So uh, here, without sort also, it will work because output of LS is anyway sorted. Correct. So uh, here, if, if we don't have the sort also, it will work. If we have the sort also, it will still work. Uh, what if, you know, in the question, uh, if it is not in the order, like A, B, C, D? Yeah, then... Uh, you cannot do it right so if you just sort is do... not meaningful in that case yeah so uh anyway if you're using sort or not using sort the output of it will be same so ls and ls sort will give you the same thing but if let's say the folder is a and bcd are files so uh that you that will not work so if a is the folder and bcd is the file you can still use sort by using the dash r flag so you can reverse sort mm. and it will have a at the end so that will work but let's say if some random thing was the target directory let's say c and A, B, and D were files. So then you cannot do it this way. You have to manually specify the dash T and what is the target directory. So the question is starting from this one only, right, sir? Uh, which one? 
the question starts from this this line dw or ls minus l okay. yeah yeah no, so before that they have given some uh, hints about how xr works uh, but then uh, and then they have shown what is the current directive okay so this is the question yeah thanks yeah so thanks. let's see the next one okay so here what we are doing is similar to the previous off question so again we are using our dictionary and storing the uh, entire line as key and the frequency of that line as the value. So I'm simply incrementing the count every time we are uh, encountering that line. So for all the lines, we are doing that. So it's creating, a, again, a dictionary, which has keys of all the unique lines and values of the count of those. So then in the end, so end runs after all the lines are processed, we are iterating over all the uh, unique lines, right? So we are iterating over i in error. So all the keys in the dictionary. And then we are checking if the value of that uh, key in that dictionary is greater than 2. So then we are printing i. So here we are given three files, file 1, file 2, file 3. So there are multiple ways when this can be true. right? So for example, if a line is present in file 1 three times or four times, not present in file 2 and not present in file 3 also, then also this will be true, right? Because the count of that will be greater than two. So it will be printed. Or if it is present, let's say, uh, two times in file one, one times in file two, and it is not present in file three, still the overall count of that will be three, right? Two plus one, three. So still it will be true and it will be printed. So uh, it, it can be true for multiple cases. So we are not checking if it's more present more than two times in individual file. We are checking overall in all the files, so basically in the concatenation of all the files, if a line is present more than two times, so if it's present three or more times. So then the question asks which of the, so here it's a bit tricky. So here it is not asking that, what does this command do? Here it is asking uh, which of these conditions will ensure that this command will print the line. So here, the first option is if a line is present once in any two files, so if a line is present once in any two files, so then what will be the total count of that line? Two equal to two, one. Two, right? So it will not be greater than two. So it will not be printed. So that's why this option is incorrect. So then the second option is if a line is present in all three files. So if a line is present in all three files, what will be the count of that? Three. Will it be three or? in If a line is present in all three files, at least three at least three right so it can be three or more than three but whether if it's three or if it's more than three this condition is always true so it is it will always be more than two so then this will always be printed so in this uh, option if a line is present in all three files whether it's present once or multiple times this will always print that line so this condition that's why is correct the third option is that if a line is present in any two files and its total occurrence is at least three so then also this value will be at least three. So that will again still be true. So RRI will still be greater than two if it is at least three. So it will still be printed. So in this condition also, that line will always be printed. So and, and the fourth option is if a line is present in only one file, but it's total, uh, but it's total the occurrence, but it's total occurrence is at most two. So if it's total occurrence is at most two, then obviously this value is also at most two and it is not greater than two. So this line will not be printed. So here uh, it can be for other conditions also. For example, if a line is present only in one file for three or more times, then also it will be printed. But we are not asked uh, in what conditions this will be printed. We are asked in which of these conditions will it be printed. So here only option B and C are correct and A and B are incorrect. Oh, this one makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. So we just uh, are concerned about the total number of counts being greater than two. So that can be, that can happen for both of these conditions. So typically this is an array, right, sir? Yeah, this ARR is a dictionary associated with. Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Okay. So this is uh, like a basic theory-based question. So we have to given how awk works and we are asked a few uh, which of these statements are true regarding awk so the first is begin block will execute the script before reading the file so that is true so before even the first line is read 
the begin block is executed. The second option is uh, the awk script that only has a begin block does not require a file or std in. So this is true. So let us see that. So for example, if I have, uh, so if I run the awk script, which has only the begin, right? So and in the begin, I, let's say, print something. I print hello. So whatever we do in the begin, but if it does not have any action block, then we actually don't need to give any file to it. So we don't need to give file also. We don't need, it will not wait for the standard input also. So you can see it will simply uh, print whatever is there in the begin and it will exit. Because Awk knows if there is no action block, there is no meaning of even reading any input. Well, whatever be the input, I am anyway not doing anything on it. So it's not going to either read the file which we give, or if we don't give any file also, it will not read the standard input. But if we have a uh, action block, even if that action block is empty, it will run the begin and it, then it will wait for the standard input. So either we have to give the file to it, like uh, if I give, let's say, the file A, then it will read the lines of file and then it will uh, exit. But if I don't give a file, then it will uh, wait for the input. So anything I give in the standard input, it will take line by line. And only if I do control D to mark the end of the input, only then it will stop. So this is true only if there is only a begin block. So if there is no uh, action block or if there is no end block, then uh, awk script does not look for any file or std. Actually, this I would have got confused because yeah. the language is a little off, Shayan, because it says that only has begin block. Yeah. It can also mean script... it has only has it can also mean it has begin and something else also. Uh, the awk script that only has a begin block does not require. Uh, here it uh, says only has a begin block. Right? So, so there could be scripts without a begin block also. Uh, OK, yeah. So if it is a script without a begin block. No, that will require a standard in or a file. I'm saying the language wise, it was a little confusing. I yeah. would have struggled. That's all I'm saying. Uh, no, if, uh, if it, it does not have a begin also, if it is totally empty, then also it will not require a standard input. No, I'm so, saying. So yeah. let's say there's a file which has print something, right? It doesn't have a begin, yeah. right? Uh, that will require, even if it has a begin and a print as a sub, some end block or whatever, it will still yeah. require and that will qualify under this. Anyway, it's, yes, okay, yes. I was just saying it's a little confusing. Should yeah. have been only has begin block and nothing else. Yeah, uh, I am not sure, but I think this only uh, qualifies for that because it's telling the awk script that only has a begin block. So it has begin and nothing else. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, this. OK, that's fine. Be, let's, yeah. let's, it's fine. Don't worry. But Don't this worry. is basically what it means, what yeah, it yeah, tried yeah. to mean. Yeah. So the third option is uh, end block will execute once all lines from the files are stated in are read. So this is obviously like uh, general knowledge about awk. And the fourth option is uh, the block without any pattern will execute for all the lines from the file or std. So this is also obviously how it works. So if you don't give a pattern here, like uh, we have been doing for many cases, if I simply give an opening and closing, so it will run for uh, all the lines. So whatever I give, it will print that. And so this is also correct. Sir, I'm not able to understand the fourth part, this point. So the fourth part says, if I don't give any pattern uh, before this, uh, action block right so here i can give some pattern like uh, it should match some regex you say, you say nr greater than 10 or something. yeah or something yeah. like some condition nr greater than 10 so if i give this condition then only when this condition matches this will be executed but if i don't give any condition or any pattern then this will be executed for all the lines in that file oh so that is what this fourth option means okay so, okay. so Let's see uh, what else we have. OK, so here we have a question where uh, how grep works is given, how sort works is given, <coughs> and then how the grep RIC works is given. So if you see in grep, the R is for recursive. So it will uh, go over all the files in the directory. I means. Uh, Ignore case, so it will be case insensitive. So it will search for uh, with lowercase and uppercase both. And uh, C means it will print only the count and oh. not the 
uh, lines itself. So whenever we are using R, it will automatically print the name of the file also with a colon and then separate the uh, count. So here you can see if I do grep RIC print, it will search all the files recursively in my current directory for the word print. And whichever file has the word print, it will uh, print its name with the number of uh, lines which has that. So auto SSH has it three times, install.sh has it 44 times, uninstall.sh has 12 times, upgrade.sh has 12 times, and example.sh has it zero times. So then we are printing this data file. So this uh, simply has multiple lines of three fields separate by commas. And then we are also showing if we print uh, give this output to the standard input of sort and we use the minus t to specify the field separator to be comma and we ask it to sort by the third field and sort it numerically then it will be sorted numerically by the third field so you can see i the actual data is 244234772347614761 like this but if we sort by the third field splitted by the comma then the output will be in that order so 4761 23,000, 24,000, 26,000, 27,000. So these are just examples to uh, familiarize you with the syntax of uh, sort and grep. So then the question asks, uh, what will be the output from the above command? So this is the command, grep RIC print. So you can see grep RIC print will show you the name of the files, uh, the full path of the file, absolute uh, relative path of the file, followed by a colon, and then the count of the word print in that file. How many times the word print, how many lines the word print exists. So first we are doing that. So it will basically print this thing. Then we are piping that output to sort. And we are sorting numerically in reverse order. And we are splitting by colon. And we are taking the second field to sort. So from this, we are telling sort to split by colon and take the second field to sort by. And we are sorting numerically and in the reverse order. So it will have 44, then 12 and 12, and then 3, and then 0. That will be the order. And then from that output, so that output will still contain both the fields, uh, the name and the count. Then we are cutting that. So we are using cut with the delimiter colon and taking the first field. So we are only taking the name and not the count. So after the sort is done, we don't need the count anymore. So the count was used for sort. After it is sorted by count, we cut and take only the name part. And then we are taking only the first 10 fields. So what this will do is this will print out the uh, top 10 files, which has the uh, most uh, number of lines having the word print in it. Right, so let us see the options. Total number of lines having the string print in all files and the current and subdirectories. So this is uh, not total number of lines because it is not going to print the sum of it. It will print the name of all the files separately. So then the uh, second option is total number of occurrences of print in all uh, files. So this is also incorrect because we are printing the names of the files. So the third and fourth uh, take that correctly. So it's telling top 10 files that contain the least number of li lines. So this is incorrect because it is telling least number. Whereas if you see, we are sorting with dash R. So we are sorting in a reverse order. So the highest number will be at top and lowest number will be at bottom. And then we are taking head. So we are taking the most highest 10 numbers. So the correct option is this one, top 10 files that contains most number of lines having the word print among all files in the current and subdirectories. So this current and subdirectories is due to the dash R. So the top 10 is due to the uh, head minus N 10 and the sort. So first we are sorting based on the count and then we are taking only the top 10. We're taking the top 10 files that contains the most number of lines. And uh, this is number of lines and not number of occurrences because grep C prints the number of lines of occurrences and not the number of occurrences itself. So that is why this third option is correct. So just let me know if this was clear. Sorry, Shane, what was the last thing you said? Top. Uh, uh, so uh, here, like we have two things, right? So in the second option, it says total number of occurrences. 
uh, it says number of occurrences and this one says number of lines that have print. So that is the difference. So here, if you're using grep minus C, so grep minus C will always print the number of lines that match. So for example, yeah, it won't print the line itself. Yeah, it will not print the line itself. It will also not print the count of occurrences. It will print the count of lines. So uh, for example, if I have, let's say this file called uh, test and here I have the word hello, hello, and then I have hello here three times, right? So if I do cat test, you can see we have hello, hello. And if I do grep hello, so this will just print it. But if I do minus C, it will print the number of lines that has hello. So it will print two. It will not print the number of occurrences of hello. It will not print three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is why here uh, this option is correct. Sir, about the fourth option, top 10 files that contains. Yeah, it, it is telling least number, right? but we are sorting with yeah, descending. we are sorting descending order. So it will take the uh, most uh, popular, not the least one. OK. Sir. OK. And uh, then we have, again, similar thing. So we are doing grep dash ric print cut df2. So here we are taking the second field directly. So we are discarding the first field. We are taking only the second field, which is the count. And that entire thing we are passing into a while loop. So we are sending it to a while loop, which is reading each standard input using the read command and storing it in a variable n. So basically, we are iterating over this output of grep ric print pipe cut minus d colon minus f2. So that output will be something like uh, this, only the numbers 0, 12, 12, 44, 3 in separate lines. So we are iterating over all those lines, and each time the number is stored in n. So then we are using this variable count. So we are setting the default value of count to be 0. So for the first time when count is not initialized, we are doing count equals. If count exists, then value of count. Otherwise, the default value of 0. And then we are doing count equals count plus n. So we are simply summing over all the counts. So this thing, which was option in the previous question, total number of lines, that is now the correct thing that it is doing. So we are now counting all the occurrences, uh, and we are summing all the occurrences, and uh, all the lines of occurrences. And then we are also printing uh, the value of count in each iteration. So the value of count is updating for each line, and we are uh, printing that also for each iteration. And then output of that while loop we are passing to tail and we are taking only the last line. So this while loop will print as many lines as there was input. And each line will be the cumulative sum of the uh, input. So for example, if the uh, file, let's say, was like this, so if it was 1, 2, 2, 1, 4. So if I do this, so if we pass this to this while loop, so it is doing while read n do so this line actually is uh, even if you don't have it it'll work the same so we can omit that for now so what we are doing is we are doing count equals count plus n and uh, so if we then print so what we're doing here is printing that value every time so if we print that value every time then we are basically printing the cumulative sum so for the first line the line is one so the value is one for the second line value is two so one plus two is three the third line is 1 plus 2 plus 2, which is 5. So we are printing 5. Fourth line is 5 plus 1, which is 6. And last line is 6 plus 4, which is 10. So for in each iteration, we are printing the updated value of count, which is basically the cumulative sum till that line. And then if we take only the last line from it by using tail, uh, tail minus n1, so then we just get the last line which is the last value of the count. So that is the total sum of all the uh, values given as input to the while loop. So the grep ric uh, pipe cut the colon f2 will get only these uh, numbers of occurrences in each uh, number of lines of occurrences in each file. And then we are summing over them all. And we are taking the <coughs> total sum of it and printing that. So that is basically same thing as this first option. So for this code now, that first option is cut. 
So it is the total number of lines have the string print in all files in the current and subdirectories, current directory and subdirectories. So here again, this second option uh, is incorrect because it is telling total number of files. So we are not adding the total number of files. We are adding the total number of lines. And the third and fourth are also incorrect because it is telling total number of occurrences, whereas grep will not print the number of occurrences at all. It will print the number of lines that have the match. So because of this occurrences, third and fourth is wrong. And because of this files, the second is wrong. So the first option is correct. Sir, I have a doubt here, sir. Yeah. Uh, in this code, uh, we have uh, re while read n. So yes. what, what n will have, sir? And will store the uh, value of each line one by one. So it's a while loop. It will run as many times as the number of lines given in standard input. And in each iteration, n will store the entire line of that standard input. Okay. So in here, we are just giving one number in each line. So n will just contain that number. Because we are cutting the output of graph, right? We with colon and we're taking only second field. Second fields. So, so even even if we just do tail minus one, it should work, right? I mean the same thing. Uh like without the while loop? No, no, after the while loop, because the tail is after the while loop, right? So yeah, yeah. If I did just tail minus one also, it'll work, right? It's the same thing. I'm just taking the last oh, sir, sir. uh instead of tail uh, minus n one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that will also work. Both are same. Yeah, <laughs> and tail minus n x and tail minus x both will give the same answer. Uh, sir, could you explain the uh, count variable initialization that you've done here, count uh, colon dash zero? Yes. So what this means is uh, if count variable is declared and it has some value, then store count equals count. So that basically does nothing. So value of count is stored in the variable count. If the variable count is not declared, then the value zero is stored in the count. So in the first iteration, the count value is started with zero. Then uh, it is added to like like with it the value of n is added and each iteration it just keeps on adding the value of n. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So even if we don't do this, uh, it will work because in this mathematical uh, environment, uh, if there is a variable that is not declared, it will simply uh, convert into the value zero. So it will automatically do this. So in this case, we don't need this line. Even if we don't have this line, answer will be the same. Sir, one more doubt. Sir, one trivial yeah. doubt. Grep minus R I C then print yeah. in which yeah. file it is taking, sir. File number is gone, not given. No, no, it is R, right? So it is recursive. It is taking for all the files in the current directory and all the subdirectories in the current directory. So R means recursive. So it does not look in one file, it looks in all the files. All the files and uh, all the files in the current and current and subdirectories. Yes, so it will recursively keep on going into all folders as long as uh, there is an end. So it will keep on searching all the files from the current directory. Yeah, this should be uh, colon minus or colon is equal to? Uh, this part, OK. So uh, here, because we are taking the entire value and putting it in count, so colon minus is also fine. Uh, if you are uh, only, if you're not doing this count equals, then we need to use colon equal to. So ah, this correct, correct. if you're printing it, echo yeah. or something. Yeah, yes, yeah got yes. it. So this part itself is not uh, storing the value of zero in count. This is only giving the value of zero. And then that given value is used by this count equals zero. So it is then storing it in this step. So what if I put their count equal to uh, zero? Then it will reset to zero in every iteration. We don't want it to reset to zero in every iteration. We only want it to store zero when it is not defined. Uh, could you explain the count command after a while, the first one? I am not able to follow this. So this is like uh, in week two, we saw we can do this kind of variable manipulation, right? So if a variable is present, then its value is returned. If it is not present, then this value is returned. So if the count variable is defined, then its value is returned. So this will become count equals count. If this variable is not defined, then it will return the value 0. So this will become count equals 0. So only for the first iteration, this will be count equals 0. So we will initialize count with 0. And for all the rest of the iterations, it will be count equals count. So it will not change the value of count. Because it's not 0. 
uh, because it is defined it has some value hmm. uh, but uh, because uh, it is defined yeah. um, count equal to dollar within brackets we have given count colon uh, if and zero so what does this mean sir uh, sorry so, yeah, that is what uh, is uh, the meaning of this, right? So you, sh you can go through like the week two lectures. Okay. So if you have a variable called count and you do this, so this will return the value of count if it is defined. Otherwise, it will return the value of anything after the hyphen if it is not defined. OK. OK, sir. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully this one is clear. So. Earlier one, we were printing the sum of all the occurrences. Uh, sorry, we were printing uh, the top 10 files by sorting the occurrences. And here we are printing the sum of all the occurrences. So uh, let's go to the next one. So here again, we have a similar thing. I think it's the same thing only. Uh, grep RIC, print, uh, cut df2, while read and do count equals uh, everything looks same to me. Okay, so this is the same command. So the question is, which of the following options is equivalent to this command? So this command we saw prints the total number of, uh, so this prints the sum of what is given as standard input. So the first part remains same. So it's still gra uh, grep dash ric cut d. So it's telling instead of using this while and this tail, how can we directly get the sum of everything using some other commands? So the first is awk. So here what we are doing is for each line, we are adding the value of $1 to the variable C. So awk by default initializes variables with 0. So for the first time, it will be C equals 0 plus $1. For everything, for every other iteration, it will be C equals C plus $1. So because here we just have one uh, number, $1 uh, works, so it will uh, not cause an issue. Ideally, this should be $0. But in this case, dollar one will also work. So we are then adding the value of each line in a variable called C. And then after all the lines are processed, we are running the end where we are printing the value of C. So this is basically same as doing this while and then this tail. Right? So we are just printing in the end, we are just printing once. So we are not printing in each iteration. Only in the end, we are printing the value of the sum. That is why the first option is correct. In the second option, uh, instead of doing the cut, we are doing the cut also inside awk. So what we are doing is only grep RIC print. So it will have the name of the file colon the count. So then we are passing it to awk and we are setting the field separated to be colon. So it can successfully use dollar two to get only the count and dollar one to get the name of the file. So then for each line, we are doing C plus equals dollar two. Because here we are taking the entire line and splitting by colon and taking the second part. So this cut part is done by awk itself in here. And everything else is same. So this is obviously also correct. So in the third one, basically it's the mixture of A and B, but taking the worst of both. So I have removed the cut, but I have not given the FS equals colon, or I'm not taking dollar two. So I'm still taking dollar one without FS. And I am also not cutting. So this will try to add the entire line uh of the uh, output of grep uh, dash ric so it is not so it will basically do string concatenation instead of numeric addition so this will not give the correct value so because here the output of grep ric contains the name of the file and the count and here we are not splitting it either using cut or inside awk so that's why this is incorrect and in the fourth one uh it is same as the second one but instead of using plus equals we are only doing equals so we are not actually summing it. We are only storing the last value. So for each line, this value of C gets overridden. And uh, in the last line, the value of that is stored. So it will only print the last line's value. So that's why this is also incorrect. Right, so hopefully this one was clear. So it's basically asking uh, which of these commands does the same thing as this one, where we were adding the values given in standard input. So the last option, why it is not correct, sir? So here we are doing C equals dollar two instead of C plus equals dollar two. So we are not adding the values. We are simply overwriting the variable each time. Mm. OK, sir. Yeah. OK, and hopefully this is the last question. So here uh, we have, again, the same thing. So grep RIC, 
uh, and then cut D. So what will be the equivalent command using said with respect to the provided data? So here we are, we don't want to uh, get the sum. So he, here we just want to get the grep RIC and then we want to cut by the uh, colon and get the second field. So we want to get only the uh, number of lines which match. So here, if we are instead of using cut, we are using said substitute any character any number of times before a colon with nothing. So the colon and anything before the colon is removed. And here we are obviously assuming that there is no colon in the file name itself. So if there is a colon in the file name, then uh, this colon can match uh, that colon in the file name. But it's told that the file name does not have any colon. The only colon in the output is the colon printed by grep itself uh, after the name of the file and before the count. So if we match everything till that colon, including that colon, and substitute that with nothing, then that will be same as simply cutting and taking the second field. So the first one is correct. And the second option, here we are saying that uh, substitute any character which is not a colon. So here dot means any character, any number of times, dot star. And here we are telling any character that is not a colon, any number of times, followed by a colon. And we are substituting that with empty. So here also, this is the same thing, because uh, we are assuming that there is no colon in the file name. So we are simply substituting. Uh, we're basically removing that part of the line from each line. So any character that is not a colon, any number of times followed by a colon. So the entire file name and the colon afterwards is replaced with nothing this. So the third one is uh, not correct because here we are searching for uh, any character that is not a colon present uh, any number of times followed by a colon. Then again, any character that is not a colon any number of times. So this will remove the entire line. So because we have the file name, colon, and then the count. So the first part, which is uh, not a colon star, will match the file name. The colon will match the colon. And not a colon star will then match the count of the lines. So the entire thing is then replaced with uh, nothing. So this will output empty lines. So this is not correct. And the fourth one, we are doing uh, match colon and then dot star. So we are removing the wrong thing. So we are removing the count and not the file name. So we are supposed to remove the file name and not the count. So this is opposite of the first option. So this is also incorrect. So the only the first and second options are correct. Right. Hopefully this one was clear. So that, yeah, that is all we have for this uh, 2023 January paper. Sir, one doubt, sir. Second yeah. option, can you explain to me, sir? Yeah, so the second and first options are uh, more or less same. So the first option, we say uh, any character, any number of times followed by a colon. And the second option, we are saying any character except the colon character, any number of times followed by a colon. So both are same because we are assuming that there is only one colon in the line. OK, sir. So that is the 2023 January paper. So uh, in the next session, we'll see the uh, May and the September papers also. Yes, so I'll... Uh, Shang's so, session is Thursday and Friday, right? Okay. Yes, Thursday and Friday. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I'll stop the recording. Thank you so much.